Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I want to introduce something to you. Sometimes You see, all I did was watch a YouTube video and it told me about this site, Suno, S U N O dot A I. And I can create music that I want to listen to. And those are just words I put together. Now, this is another version of the song, but we're going to let this play in our background. Now, you know what? I have to figure out how to, while I'm playing the video, let these play in the background. Now, what's happening, this is a full song of the other version. Okay, the other one was just a snippet, but this is the full song. Five minutes and 54 seconds. Now, what I was going to do, ladies and gentlemen, these are not all the songs, but they some of them. And this was one of the ones I did when I first put this together. So I was going to, I got to stop it because I got to talk to y'all about something. Okay. So y'all go ahead and play with Suno. If they have a free version, y'all play with Suno. Tell me what you think. Now, I'm not, I'm not advocating Suno because there will be other software that will do the exact same thing and probably have more capabilities. That's where we are right now. Every couple of months, there's a new app coming out, a new software coming out. So don't jump on one program because you'll end up spending money for nothing. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, what's happening now is that these idiots who are creating these softwares, and I call them idiots, they're wanting to charge you up the yin yang so that they can get a profit so that they can sell their product to someone else and make millions. Well, I'm not here to help them make millions. I'm here for my benefit. I have selfish motives. And it's okay in this aspect to have selfish motives if I'm going to be spending my hard-earned cash. All right. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. That was a segue into this, the... 26C video where we're going to talk to you guys about nothing else but how to file a motion in court. First, many of you don't know what a motion is, so let me tell you what a motion is. And I don't like the word motion because you don't have the right to motion the court, but you do have the right to petition the court. So stop calling your motions motions and call them petitions. All right? So for the sake of this video, I have to use the word motion to communicate with ChatGPT. But I'm going to try to see if I can get it to do everything in a petition. So watch what I have to do. I have to give it what's called a prompt. So pay attention because we're going to do this so that you can understand how to do a motion. So the first thing we do, first thing I have to do for the sake of this video, not that you have to do, but I have to do this, wake up, wake up. I am going to need your assistance, comma. I need to get a sample template, comma, in outline format, comma, explaining exactly what goes in that section and a sample and or example <clears throat> in each section of the outline period this is going to be a petition to the court comma
I need you to put page numbers on each page, comma, I need it to be at least 1,200 words in length, comma, and I need it to be written as if a human wrote it, who is knowledgeable about the law and 63 years old, having studied law for greater than 40 years. Comma, do you think you can help me with this exercise? Question mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm about to do, I'm just going to put the prompt. I don't care what his response is. He's going to say, yes, he's willing to help me because he's stupid. Now, we're going to do this for each one of these. Okay? For each one of these. So we have several prompts, and then we're going to do it for Gemini to show you that you can use this with any one of these models. But we have several motions that we're going to get the system to do. Give me one second. And now Gemini. All right, now this is exercise, so we don't care what the response is. Please adjust the content as necessary with specifics. So what he did is he created a petition. Now, what you all need to understand, every motion is the same format. Pay attention. Every motion is the same format. Stop trying to make your motions look like those idiots called attorneys. Okay, stop trying to make it look like theirs. Now, watch, you see what he did? Wake up. Now, in this particular motion, comma, you will include a table of authorities, comma, table of contents, comma, an introduction, comma, a background section. Comma. You will also include a petition for relief section. Comma. You will include a summarization section. Summarization comma, and you will also include a conclusive analysis section, period. You will not use the word argument, but instead you will use the word presentment. And you will not use the word submit or submit it, but you would use the word present and present it. Period. You will not use the word dear court or dear clerk, comma, you will use a complete caption with a generic case number, comma, and this petition will be a petition for redress in small claims court, comma, and you will list three generic issues of violations of the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act by a creditor, period. You will list the three sections of the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, and you will explain how the creditor violated these sections of the act and how you're suing for the maximum amount comma and you will list this in the punitive and compensatory damages section comma is that understood
Credit Reporting Act. Credit Reporting Act. Consumer Credit Protection. Consumer Credit Protection. Uniform Commercial Code, which you refer to as contract law, comma, and you will not use the Uniform Commercial Code, but you will use the state's version of the Uniform Commercial Code for the state of California. Contract Law Basic Principles Due process and equal protection of law. Due process and equal protection of law. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to do here is show you how easy it is to get the AI units to produce motions for you. Many of you are afraid, scared to do your own motions because you don't know what to do. So watch, just pay attention. We've already gotten started. Each one is a separate motion. So think of each one as a separate video. And look, it did the motion, gave us the outline. The only thing I have to do is copy and paste this and what I need to do Ladies and gentlemen, when I do these videos, I'm connected to the internet. Because I'm connected to the internet, the system is run by these language models. Well, not actually the language models. They're actually run by AI. There's a difference between ChatGPT, which is a language model. It just has a bunch of words thrown into it. Like uh, alphabet soup. It's just They just took a bunch of letters and words and threw it into the system. A bunch of documents, threw it into the system, 
And so the system comes up with what's more than likely the best idea. Now, there is another AI system being produced and they're about to introduce it. This particular AI system is supposed to be a lot better than ChatGPT because it's analytical. It will give you a more precise answer to your question. Whether it will be able to do motions or not, it's left to see. Uh, but I'll let you guys know about that as soon as the system, uh, I did let everybody know in our group that we trade in about the system and sent them the opportunity of joining the list of uh, early subscribers. Um, so, but we'll keep you guys informed. Now, back to the motion. Many of you are nervous. Oh, can you read over my documents before I put it in? Because I don't have no confidence in myself. Excuse me. You know how to speak for yourself. You know how to speak up for yourself. You do it with your family all the time. When you want to get a point across to your brothers, sisters, mothers, cousins, uncle, nieces, and nephews, you ain't got no problem telling them. So stop sitting up there second-guessing yourself when you're talking to some stranger that you ain't never even met. Why would you be afraid to talk to the idiot, the judge? I call them idiots because they think that all of you are stupid. <laughs> and they don't know you like I do. They don't know that none of you are stupid. If you were stupid, first pay attention. You wouldn't sit here and listen to these videos and start to understand that you knew most of this information from the very beginning. Okay, if you were stupid, you wouldn't pay attention. Stupid people don't know how to pay attention. Stupid people don't listen. You all know how to listen. So stop treating yourselves and letting them treat you as if you are stupid. You are not stupid. Don't play their game. Don't have a low self-esteem about yourself. You know who you are. Okay, so start walking and talking like you know who you are. I, and I'm not talking about going out there and telling people what to do and telling people off. That that's not who you are. You've never been that person. You know who you are. Conduct yourself in the demeanor and in the manner of the person whom you are. Don't be who they want you to be. When you put together these motions, just go ahead and put it in your own words and send it to them. Don't use ChatGPT to create the whole motion for you. Use it to create the format, and then you fill in the blanks. Now watch, see, you see how he did this table of contents? Mm-mm. Now watch what I do now. Wake up. Wake up. I need you to give me an example paragraph or an example summarization of each section, comma, what goes in each section, comma, I asked you to do that initially and you haven't completed the task. Stop listening. Like, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to tell you, I'm literally doing eight videos in one right now, and we're going to keep it short for you. This is how, I'm just showing you how you can get it to do several motions at one time. Okay? We're calling them presentments, or we're calling them petitions. Several at one time. Okay? And he's breaking down each section so you can understand why those sections are what they are. Now, he didn't break down every section. So now I got to get him to take care of that. Wake up. I said every section. That includes the caption, comma, the table of authorities, comma, the table of contents, comma, the introduction, comma, the summarization, comma, every section. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes it does what it wants to do and not what you asked it to do because it's a language model. They programmed it to be that simple and basic. Okay, now see, he still didn't explain what goes in the introduction. Oh, he did. Okay, so there you go. He's doing it now. And all you have to do when you get ready to do your motion, come back to this video. Okay, when you get ready to do your motion to the court, your petition to the court, come back to this video. It shows you how to do every single section. I can't give you guys all of these. Well, I guess I can give you guys all of these links. 
I can create all kind of all of them being short links. Okay. And there you go. You guys will get each one of these links in the description. I will remove all of the other information in the description and just put the links for each of these chat GPTs. Now this is chat GPT 3.5. This is the basic free version of chat GPT. So each one of you will be able to have access to it by clicking on the link and you'll be able to continue the video from there. So if you got a motion in small claims court, bankruptcy court, doesn't matter what the court is, the motion format is the same. Lawyers are not that smart, people. Lawyers are not that, let me say it again, lawyers are not that smart. They just go to school to learn the procedures of the court. They go to school to learn that language. It takes them eight years to learn the language of the court. Eight years. That's what they're going to school for. They're learning legalese, legal terminologies. It's a foreign language. They're learning that junk. They're not learning what the law is. They don't know what the law is. Trust me, I've met too many of them, too many judges who don't understand what the law is. What is the law, ladies and gentlemen? Well, the law is not the U.S. Code. That junk was never law. The U.S. Code is codified by some stupid committee, like the UCC is written by a committee, not by Congress. The UCC is written by a committee of attorneys, a group of attorneys. The code is written by a group of attorneys. It's not law. It was never law. It's only because you accept it as law that they can bind you to it. When you challenge it, saying that junk is only prima facie, and <laughs> that junk ain't law, then things change. So, let's talk about the small claims lawsuit, ladies and gentlemen. I haven't finished the document. I will finish the document, but I haven't finished it as of yet. When I do finish the document, let me see which one, where is the small claims one? Right here. When I do finish the document, it will have the, I think I just pasted in here the interrogatories. Oh, this thing is 25 pages long so far. I got to break it down. Okay. Okay, the interrogatories, the new interrogatories, the ones that you saw in the document that we presented. Okay, this one is the one that's going to have all of that in there. All right, it's going to already have all the sections, and this is the section where you add your two to three points. You don't put the whole kitchen sink in small claims court. You are very specific. See, I specifically asked. Okay, you are very specific. Do not let them add anything else to your complaint, because once you add something else to it, you don't have the opportunity of bringing it up in another lawsuit. Just like when you're doing an appeal, if you fail to state everything in your appeal, then you can't bring it up later. I mean, in the court case, you can't bring it up on appeal. So if you fail to state something in small claims court, pay attention, you get to bring it up in another small claims lawsuit. You can't bring up the stuff you brought up before. That's why three things at a time. So what do you bring up? Well, when you're suing, you let them know that we're not doing all of the points of the interrogatories. No. I'm bringing this lawsuit because they didn't answer the first three questions or they didn't answer the, the interrogatory five through six or five through eight. You want to be specific. You want to say, I sent them these interrogatories and they failed to answer a single one. Who in the do they think they is? You don't want to do that because once you say they failed to answer a single one, then you can't bring up the interrogatories later, the other ones. Three at a time, ladies and gentlemen. Two to three at a time. They fell. Well, interrogatory number 12 is the same as interrogatory. No, it is not. It is not. It is specific. 12 is completely different than number two. Pay attention to 12. And if it was the same, they should have documented it at the time, but they failed to answer. I don't care if, if you think it's the same. I'm not arguing the points in number 12. I'm not arguing the points of number two. What I'm arguing is that they were required by law to respond to the interrogatories in the positive or the negative, and they failed to respond. So they don't have a defense. They can't say, well, this was this and that was that. They had the opportunity. 
Ladies and gentlemen, be prepared for the court to tell you that we're going to have you guys go through mediation because it's the law. Be prepared for them to say something stupid like that. Okay? Now, what you're going to say is, oh, no, I'm sorry, I can't go through mediation. They had the opportunity of going through mediation. Yeah, I, I gave them an opportunity. I communicated with them. The law says that I had to give them notice, and I gave them notice. So, no, I'm not going through mediation because mediation, that's just some rule that you guys created. That means that they can listen to you, but they don't have to listen to me. And I'm sorry, but they don't have a, an option of not listening to me. And I'm not going to consent to your mediation because, no, there is no law requiring me to consent to your mediation. You want to make it seem like I'm unreasonable. No, what's unreasonable is for you to sit up there and belittle the fact that I communicated with them and they chose. It was a choice, a knowing, intentional, deliberate choice to ignore me. Well, when you ignore me and you and I have a relationship, an agreement, then there are consequences for that ignorance. Just that simple. Consequences. And they need to be held liable for the consequence of their ignorance or ignorance. I apologize. Uh, the word ignore means ignorance. It's to ignore knowledge. It, listen, ignore rents. Pay attention. So just in case you didn't know these things, now you know. And that's one to grow on. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the small claims lawsuit, as I said, the only thing is you're picking three incidents. Now, when I started off with the first set of motions, let's go there so that you guys can see. When I started off at the very beginning, I told it to give me generic paragraphs for each section. The only thing you do is in those generic paragraphs, you put in the issue. Okay, that's all you're doing. You're going to put in those generic paragraphs right here. You're going to put in the issue. And that's what he did. He gave me generic examples. Okay, and that's all you're doing. That's your complaint. And you stick to it. Now, I'm going to give this guy a little bit of credit. His name is Carlos. He is, uh, he, he likes to tell everybody he's blind, he can't see. And he's right. He's blind, he can't see. And he likes to use that as a crutch. Uh, Mr. Carlos has been taking these creditors and everything to small claims court. He's actually been having some success. I know. I, I don't want to give him too much credit. But he's been doing the same thing I was doing at the age of 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Because that's what I was doing. I was going into small claims court and suing these fools and winning. Because small claims court is the people's court. Why is it the people's court? Because you don't have to be a lawyer. So you don't have to go to college or their little stupid admission school to be admitted into the profession. No, all you got to do is stand up there. And the moment they start getting technical, you can bring them back to earth saying, excuse me, this is small claims court. So you guys are going to have to use English with me because I don't understand legalese and I'm not required to understand legalese. So if you're going to talk to me, I need you to talk to me in English. Bring an English dictionary and a legal dictionary into the courtroom. I'm not joking when I say this. If they bring forth any rebuttal, you just slap them on the table. I said, you're gonna have to speak English. And if you don't start speaking English in this courtroom, then I'm gonna put you under oath. Oh, I'm sorry, you're already under oath. And I'm gonna demand that you answer the question, which of these two dictionaries are you using? And you can't be using both because that's a completely different language. These are two separate dictionaries, which means they are two separate languages, which means there are two separate definitions. I don't want to play the guessing game as to what y'all are meaning or what y'all are talking about. We're going to talk in English today. What? You guys could do that all day long. And if they want to say, I don't want to, excuse me, I'm, you, you're about to make me come out of my, come out of my person. I'm not here to play games with you and I'm not here to play the word games. You will answer my questions or you will remove yourself from that bench and we'll get somebody here who knows how to conduct the courtroom. 
don't tell me how to do my job. What you mean don't tell you how to do your job? That's exactly what I'm telling you how to do. Because you don't seem to know what your job qualifications were and what your job parameters are. You will answer my questions and you will do so on the record. Or you will remove yourself from that bench and we will get somebody here who knows how. And if you think that I'm joking, let me tell you how we will do this. Let me tell you how we'll handle this from now on since you want to make a conflict with me. I'll just file a complaint against your bond by the end of the day or the end of the week. I'll, it'll be at my leisure. And when I file a complaint against your bond, then I'll file a complaint against the insurance company. And once I get that complaint resolved, then I will file a complaint against you because I'll already have two judgments against you. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why you're going after a judge's bond, because when you name them in the complaint, and that's what you're going to do, and I'll show you that in a minute. When you name them in the complaint, they now have on PACER their name in a complaint. Now, PACER's got to record that just the same as it records you when you file a complaint. It records you, and it keeps records of that. Well, the insurance companies that bonds the judge, well, they check that same record. If a judge has more than one complaint against them, their insurance rates go up. But if they have three complaints against them, do you know that they're just about unbondable in every state in the union? Oh, no, they must be people of integrity. They must represent the sanctity and integrity of the court. And by having so many complaints against them, they cannot stand before the public because the court is only concerned about the public perception. That's why the courts keep doing so many things wrong. Because they keep standing up there making the public believe that it's honorable, that they can get justice in the court. So you change that. How do you change that? By bringing your complaint, ladies and gentlemen. You change the whole game. Pay attention. You change the entire game by bringing a complaint against the judge and their bond. And when you list the bond and the judge, let me show you how you do it in small claims court. One second. In small claims court, whether it's a corporation, you cannot sue corporations in small claims court. Well, no, my uncle sued the corporation in small... Look, shut up and let me finish my sentence. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot sue a, a corporation in small claims court. You may only sue persons in small claims court. It's the people's court. So what you do is the name of the person. I already have two people who are going through this right now. Now, hold on. If you fail to list a person in small claims court, guess what happens? They can now take the option of moving you to regular court and you lose all of the benefits of small claims court. They can now bring attorneys in to represent the corporation because corporations, according to their rules, may only be represented by attorneys. That's what you run into. That's the problem you end up having. Ta-da. All right. You list the CEO or the judge's name and then you put bond and then you put, which is Doe 1. Because you don't know the bond number, people. You don't know nothing about the bond. You just know they have a bond. They do have a bond. Don't let them lie to you and say they don't have a bond. Because if they don't have a bond, that means they're violating the First Amendment. Sorry. First Amendment gives you the right to petition for redress, which means it includes compensation, which means these individuals must be able to show that they can cover the compensation should they damage you. That's the First Amendment. That's where that comes from. Then you put the name of the servicing company. If you're dealing with a bank, if you're dealing with a bank, you put their name up here. If you're dealing with a judge and you're going after the bond, you put the name of the insurance company here. That'll be Doe 2. And then in your next lawsuit, and I need to put this here, okay? In your future lawsuits, you're going after all of these, okay? Now, in your complaint, I do need you guys to pay attention. Just in case you name somebody wrong, you're going to put those four through unlimited, just in case you forget to name somebody because you get to serve them later once you find out who they is. That's why you do that. Okay? Really that simple. All right. But at the beginning, you're going to be specific. You're only going to list two people at the most. You're not going to list four or five or six people. You don't need to. You can sue them separately. So let's say you lost this one. You're going to appeal. The appeal is, goes to the Superior Court, goes to the county district court, county uh, circuit court. The appeal does not go to the appeals court. It goes to the next level court, which is the regular court. 
and it only costs a couple of dollars, 60 to $70, that's it, for your appeal. Now that goes before a judge. Oh, by the way, I'm going to tell you this, but you don't have to do this. It's not necessary. If you get and you go into small claims court, pay attention. You have the right to ask for a judge to hear your matter and not a magistrate. Okay? And if you think you're going to run into a problem with a magistrate, a magistrate is somebody who is kind of technically an attorney trying to move up the ranks and become a judge. And so that's, they get their practice in small claims court. That, that's how they get their training. That's their on-the-job training. I know, amazing, huh? All right, ladies and gentlemen, you can ask for a judge. The only problem is if you ask for a judge, it's going to take longer. Small claims court is supposed to be a uh, quick wham, bam. Hey, get out of my way. That's small claims court. So, if you are going after a bond, then it is suggested that you list the name of the judge, name of the peace officer, name of the public official. Doesn't care if they're a congress member. Don't care if they're a judge. Don't care if they're a director of a particular agency of the federal government. Don't care if it's the DMV. You list the name of the director or CEO. Then you put comma, and we got to put this comma. See, that one has a comma. You're going to put comma. Because you want to let them know, uh-oh, you're supposed to be up here, not down there. You want to let them know what the subject matter is. The subject matter is the bond, not the CEO, not the director, not the judge, not the insurance company. The subject matter is their bond. Okay, so it's going to be insurance company. Okay, now I put bond there, and you don't need a bond. I did that because it's a servicing company, because they have a bond. The insurance company has a bond, too. Shh. Don't tell nobody. I know, I know, ain't that something? Everything is insurance. Young man's name was Josiah. He was the first to actually say those words because he did his research and found out that everything is insurance. So I give Josiah his credit when he did that research because he was 100% right, 100% correct because that's what the securities laws are all about. That's insurance, people. Congress was insuring all of you. They were insuring all the paperwork. That's why all of the paperwork have been converted into securities. Security is in insurance. Pay attention. Go look up the word. Security is insurance. Everything is insurance, ladies and gentlemen. Everything is backed up. All of them are securities. Your birth certificate, not the certificate, your birth record is a security. You want to get control of your birth record? Then sue. No, well, we created the record, Your Honor. No, you did it in my name. That's my image. That's my property. That's not yours. Ladies and gentlemen, all of these websites you're going to, all of these particular entities that are telling you that they own your information, no, they don't. They offer that to the public. They don't have the right to commandeer your information. That's why they came up with the privacy laws. All of this information sharing, because somebody, they called it the information age. They called it that for a reason, before we even got here, that they were going to share and sell your information and they're saying you gave them permission by contract ladies and gentlemen you know you can revoke that contract at any time you can revoke that contract at any time and still use their services as long as they offer the service to the public they cannot make demands go ahead as long as they offer the service to the public they cannot make demands now will you say well satcom y'all make demands no we don't we don't sell anybody's information What's yours is yours. That will always be the case. The only demand we make is that everybody act and honest, honestly deal with each other. Keep their word. That's it. We don't do anything more than just provide a service and the people are in complete charge and control of their own junk. The only thing we take control of is all of the extras. You see, we have the right to choose and not choose. And ladies and gentlemen, it's too late to apologize. Let me find out who this is on a Saturday. I apologize for that, everyone. That was FedEx. We were having a problem with a package, a refrigerator. And they this, they know me. I'm the guy that complains. I'm the guy that will get on your case and let you know, not here, you're not playing that game with me. 
And so I will complain all the way to the executive office. I don't have a problem with that. So they were calling me to let me know, hey, we probably won't be able to be there today. Can we come Monday? I said, no, you can't come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or next Friday. So the package was already picked up. The driver picked it up at the end of his route. He said they asked them to please come and pick it up before today because they knew they weren't going to make it here on a Saturday because they don't come out here on Saturdays. And they had already promised that they would be here on Saturday. So told her the driver already picked it up. She's kind of nice. She this this particular she's 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 green, but she's nice. And so she called me to let me know. That's how you get things done, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to be angry, but when I talk to them, I speak to them as if I'm angry or upset. Why? Because they should care about my time. Now I'm not saying that you do that. This is my personality that I display to them. Why? So that when they talk to me they treat me with respect. You see, I'm too old to be disrespected by anyone, whether it be a court or police officer or you. Too old. Okay? I don't have time for it. And if I'm doing business with someone, then we're doing business. We're not doing friendship. It ain't got nothing to do with friendship. I don't care about your feelings. We're doing business. Business ain't got nothing to do with feelings. That's what each of you need to understand. When you go into court, they don't care about your feelings. Many of you want to explain everything that happened. Well, and they did. Don't be, and they, and they, and they, and they, and they, day, day is dead, ladies and gentlemen. Don't know no more day, 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 what? Get to the point. A, B, C, D, and E. That's it. You don't have to explain all the details. Unless that idiot sitting on a bench asks you for details, don't give them details. Said they did this and they did that. And then they did this, and then they did that. That's what we're here for, Your Honor. Excuse me. Um, how did they do this, and how did they do that? Oh, well, that's simple. We have a contract. The contract specifically says they can't do this, and they did it. Well, when did they do that? Oh, it's right there in the motion, Your Honor. I put the date there. Just, just no, no, no. All you got to do is read. No, no, I'm not going to repeat it on the record, because I've already placed it on the record. Uh, let it be known to everybody that I hereby place the complaint as evidence on the record. Okay, yeah, it's an affidavit format. It even has notary. So I'm placing that as evidence. Yeah, I shouldn't have to tell you it's evidence. Since it's notarized, it's got my signature. That means, pay attention, it's an affidavit. Yeah, so it got a giraffe, not, not an acknowledgement. It's got a giraffe on it, Your Honor. That makes it an affidavit. And so it's evidence. So please review the evidence and then. Read the evidence, because I'm not here to repeat the evidence. Now look, when a judge gets an attitude with you, you tell him, you better, you better slow your roll. You, literally, you better slow your roll. How dare you sit up here and catch an attitude with me? You better lower your voice when you're talking to me. And if you don't lower your voice when you're talking to me, I guarantee you, I will get somebody to make you lower your voice, because I will file a complaint with the Supreme Court of this state. Your bar. What, you guys didn't know that the bar of the Supreme Court handles judges? It's not no judicial review committee. You write a letter to the Supreme Court and let them know, hey, I already did it in New Mexico. I didn't write no stupid commission. I wrote the court and told them about the conduct of the judge. You better believe they had an observer in that courtroom from that day forward. That judge was being watched from that day forward, and two years later, he was no longer a judge. Okay? That was out without even making a threat of going after his bond. So, the same thing with all of you. A judge gets out of line. Judges are not allowed to get out of line. You're the people. I'm sorry, you're not the people. I'm <laughs> sorry, the people are dead. No, no, we the people, all of those people are dead. All of the people who helped put the Constitution together, who voted on the Constitution and sending it to Congress... Those people are dead. Okay, over 200 years ago, they gone. So guess what, y'all? Y'all the posterity, posterity, posterity. Go read the preamble. And our posterity, you are the posterity. And because you're the posterity, you're still in charge. You're still in control. Now, don't go out there acting like Charles. You're not in that type of charge. You're not in that type of control. So ladies and gentlemen, let me let you know how small claims court works. You bring two to three issues at a time. 
that's so that you can go back in and sue the person again, sue the agency again. Yes, yes, small claims court, you get to sue a party two, three, and four times. You don't believe me? Look at what the debt collectors do to you. Look at how they keep coming after you. I've done it. They've done it. This is the game, people. That's why you can only bring up certain issues at a time. If you bring up everything, you only get to go on one and you're done. That's the reason why we gave you the document, because it has the interrogatory. So you sue as a result of the interrogatories, you sue as a result of the discovery request, and you sue as a result of the violation of the Consumer Protection Credit Protection Act, and then you sue as a result of the Truth and Lending Act, and you sue as a result of the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, and you sue as a result of the, uh, what is that? Oh, Fair Credit Reporting Act. Now, that's five different things you get to sue for each time, separately. You'll get to go after Wells Fargo five or six or seven times in small claims court if you do it right. If you do it right. And so what you do is you go into ChatGPT and do this. We're going to do one. We're not going to do all of them. Let's see what this one does. I got to see what motion it is, what I told it to do. Oh, that's 1,200 words. Th those are not 1,200 words, but I just say 1,200 words so that he can get the idea so he's not giving me. I can tell him to make it longer, but I don't. I think it's the next section where I told it specifically what law I wanted it to focus on. Or, excuse me, what statute I wanted it to focus on. Okay, no. Now he gives me the summary, and then we say sections, table of authorities, and need one more. Uh-oh, I didn't get it. Okay. Oh, FDCPA, Fair Debt Collections Practice Act. Now watch this. Wake up. What are the most common violations of the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act? Comma, could you please list 15, comma, that are violated by creditors in dealing with debtors, comma, and list the sections, comma, thank you. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what you do. Now you put each of these sections in perplexity.ai to make sure these sections are exactly what it is. Okay. Wake up. I need you to create the complaint and introducing the first three sections as being violated and put in examples of how they were violated by the Hypothetical credit. Stop listening. So, ladies and gentlemen, I asked it for the first three violations, the first three sections, and he does it because it only deals with the first three sections. I'm not bringing up any other sections. Now, this is just the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act. This is one suit, okay? Wake up. I need you to create a small claims lawsuit on section number four, five, and six of the most common violations that you listed above. Period. I need you to include all of the sections of the suit in the outline that you provided above with a sample paragraph for each section explaining what goes there. Question mark. You will put the explanative portion in parentheses in bold letters. Is that understood? Question mark. Stop listening. Needed to highlight the section so that you guys will know. So he creates the petition for you. Ta-da! There you go. That's how simple it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now, hold on. The people who had consults with me say, but you do a whole lot more. You add blah, blah, blah. That's because you're in small claims court with this one. In the other courts, other information is necessary. We're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about small claims court that makes it easier for you. Get to know small claims court. Get to know the rules of small claims court. Like I said, you'll get each one of these chat GPTs. If, if I were you, I would take the time to read each one. And I would get familiar with ChatGPT 3.5. This is free. Eventually, ChatGPT 4 will be free. 
Okay, eventually ChatGPT4 will be free, but for right now, this is free. So you just put in the link and you continue the conversation. If you have a motion that you need to file in court, a motion for a summary judgment, watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Can you give me a sample motion for summary judgment, including the information above by incorporating it within the motion for summary judgment? Question mark. And I also need you to explain why I have a right to petition for summary judgment within the body of the complaint. Stop listening. Wake up. Now I need to do a petition for evidentiary hearing, comma, and I need you to incorporate everything in the motion for summary judgment, but I need you to convert the motion for summary judgment into a petition for an evidentiary hearing, comma, including all of the parameters and, again, making it sound as if a human wrote it and not a language model. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all day long. You can do this all day, every day. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. That wasn't professional enough, comma, and it definitely wasn't long enough, comma. You didn't include all of the parameters for which I requested, comma. You need to redo that. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I haven't even read what he wrote. Okay? You saw I didn't read it. I'm just letting it type. But look at how this is much more detailed. Wake up. That is still not detailed enough. Stop listening. And I'm just going to say, ta-da. Now, basically, he did the same thing again because he has a word limit. But don't worry about the word limit, ladies and gentlemen. Just understand that you can get it done. Now, that's just an evidentiary hearing. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Can you do a motion to dismiss? Comma, under the same parameters as listed above for the motion for summary judgment and the motion for evidentiary hearing? Question mark. But remember, it has to be a petition for dismissal. Stop listening. I'm looking here to see if, oh, okay, so he didn't do the respectfully submitted thing at the bottom, and he didn't do the dear clerk of the court, okay? Whew, but he does submit, okay? So wake up. Wake up. And I thought I gave you instructions to never use the word submit. Comma, that you were to use the word present or present it. Comma, do not sit up here and ignore me again. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, it really is that simple. All you got to do is fill in the blanks. All you got to do is make it look like a motion, copy and paste it to a Word document or a Google Doc or whatever Mac does and restructure it and send it to the court. All, uh, all a motion is is a letter to the court, people. That's it. It's nothing complicated about a motion. Yes, even when I got started in all of this, I used to try to be perfect at it. I used to try to make sure I documented everything. That's why that other one is 25 pages long. Because I'm making sure I cover all the bases for you guys. Let me do that. Y'all don't need to do it. Okay? See, I can't put in the basic and simple petition that you guys put in. Because they can hear when I talk the words I use where, where I'm coming from. They know me. Doesn't matter how I step into the court. They already know who I am before I even get into the court. That's been going on since, what, 2005? 
That's why I get so many cases dismissed because they just don't want to deal with me. You guys are not there yet. Okay? I get cases dismissed because they would much rather deal with one of you than deal with me. Because they deal with me, they run the chances that they'll piss me off. Okay? I told you about the judge in Puerto Rico. When I told her, well, if you refuse to do this, then I'm just not going to say another word from here on out. <gasps> her, literally, she wasn't <gasps> as if she was being sarcastic or being stupid or, or being, I don't care if you don't say another word. She took a gas because she knew what would happen if I didn't say another word for the rest of the matter. If I remained silent for the rest of the hearing, she knew what would happen. I could have had her do it in absentia, say that I'm not participating, because I told her I wasn't going to participate. But when I continued to talk, oh, she took, she <sighs> literally exhaled. Now, many people wouldn't have paid attention to that, but I paid attention because I'm looking for body language. I'm testing the court out. I'm saying these words on purpose because I'm looking to see what her reaction is going to be. And she's not doing it because she's trying to, uh, what do you call it, pretend that she's trying to make it look like this or make it look like that. These were her natural reactions because this was second nature. This was in the midst of a conversation, a conversation that was impromptu that she wasn't prepared for because I hadn't prepared her for what I was going to say or do. I told everybody when I was in Puerto Rico, I was testing the system, bringing up all of that junk that people say. Saying stuff that I knew I didn't believe in, but I had to test the system. Why? That's why they sent me. <laughs> Sorry. There's seven different psychologists because I'm saying all that junk that many of you were going in court saying, trying to prove to you that that didn't work. So because I was saying so much junk, of course I had to be crazy. So I'm trying to tell you, you don't need to say all of that, especially in small claims court. You don't need to go through all of that in small claims court. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, if you just try, if you make a mistake, appeal because you're only bringing up what your rights are. Go over the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights are not your rights. The Bill of Rights protect your rights. So any violation of the Bill of Rights give you a right to petition for redress. They cannot interfere with your rights. That's why you're bringing up the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, the Consumer Credit Protection Act, the so-called Uniform Commercial Code. That's why you're bringing that stuff up. That's why you're saying they violated that, because they have to follow that. Now, you are not required to follow the Administrative Procedures Act. I'm not an administrative agency. I don't have to follow the Administrative Procedures Act. You are an administrative agency. You have to follow the Administrative Procedures Act, but how dare you tell me I have to exhaust my administrative remedies? There is no such thing as administrative remedies in the Constitution. So I ain't got to follow that bull. We ain't got no agreement to, for me to do no administrative remedies. Our contract is the Constitution. Constitution don't say nothing in there about how I made myself liable for no stupid remedies. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but that's the truth. Hey, we're going to take y'all on out of here with the rest of my song. We hope y'all enjoyed this. And we will talk. Okay? You know, I just forgot. This right here, I can control the volume. Okay, because this right here controls the volume. Watch. See how loud it gets? Okay, so if I bring it here, I can let that play in the background. I'm going to do that in the future. Okay. Hey, thank you guys for allowing me to bring you this series. This is the last video in the series, even though this is 26C, this is the last video in a series of empowerment. I do hope that you garnered something from this series. Hey, take care of yourselves, and we'll be back. <laughs>